Yeah, well, you know, we look at what's going on with Disney right now, and it just shows how emboldened Satan has become at this point. And he, he's definitely like a, a cornered cat. You know, he's just scratching at everything right now. But, you you know, I'm sure your your audience has seen a lot of the stuff that had come out from Disney. They're even doubling down now, saying that they're going to pay for the sex change operations and procedures and, and, you know, the chemical sex changes and all that stuff for not only their employees, but the children of their employees. And this is stuff that's going on where we see the sexualization of children going younger and younger and younger. It's something that has crept into the government ran schools. And it's something that we can definitely know that we should be looking for, especially when you look at Daniel chapter two, uh, we see that that image uh, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. We see the rise and the fall of these great empires of man, the, as you know, the, the Babylonians, the Medo-Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, the revived Roman Empire. And when you study Bible prophecy and you study history, one of the things that you find is the end of every great civilization, there was a common thread in the end of every single one of them. That was when adult sexual perversion is now forced on children. And that's where we're at. And this world is ripe. On a world scale, we are ripe for uh, the end of, of the revived Roman Empire. We're, we're ripe to see the return of Jesus because of what's happening with children. And you know to see such a large corporation like Disney come against such a simple bill, like, like the, the bill that uh, Governor DeSantis came out with in, in um, Florida. I mean, what a common sense bill. Don't teach this stuff. Don't talk to five-year-olds about sex. So, I mean, that should be a common sense thing. And yet Disney came out so hard against that. And, and you don't even have to ask the question why. They've told us why. It's their agenda. It's their not-so-secret agenda. Yeah. You know, with Disney, I look at it like this, and and I would uh, encourage everybody who has any uh, business dealing with, with Disney, if you have any righteousness in you, if, if you're going to, I mean, why would you take your family to Disneyland anymore? Why would you go to a Disney movie anymore? Why would you do these things? The, the, there, this is the absolute destruction of everything that is good. I mean, to go after little children and support it. I mean, how could, I mean, you already said it. I mean, you look at this, this is just common sense. At what point do you actually think doing a perverted act with a five-year-old is a normal thing? You know, they're, they're right. part of the protect pedophilia stuff. We have this new Supreme Court justice now who wants to protect pedophiles from what I understand or something like that. I mean, we're looking at the stuff going, this is just unbelievable, the wickedness that we're in. And here's something else about Disney. Uh, Florida doesn't need Disney. Disney needs Florida. Disney needs warm weather climates to be able to have one of their parks at. And guess what? Uh, the, Disney needs Florida a lot more than Florida needs Disney. So I, I'm, right. I'm just, uh, you know, the whole thing I'm absolutely uh, appalled at. But the sex trafficking, all of these things, is, it's, it's everywhere. And there's people in very high positions that are involved in pedophilia. Right. And you look at that, this policy that DeSantis put forward, like I said, it's a common sense policy, but um, one of the things we're finding is that it, there's a lot of people that are coming against this and you have to ask why, you know, I was involved in Southern California. I was involved in putting together policies very similar to the policy governor DeSantis just signed into law for Florida. And it was on a local scale. I brought this policy. It was essentially the same thing. Don't teach this stuff below seventh grade was our policy. Nothing below seventh grade. You're not going to talk to, to kindergartners about sex. Um, we brought this to a local school district here in Southern California, and supposedly there were Christians on the school board, but do you know that they unanimously voted against this policy? Unanimously voted. Instead, what they did was they put in the LGBTQIA+, whatever the alphabet <laughs> they're using nowadays. Um, they put policies in place that would support that and promote that, and they voted unanimously to not put in the the very common sense pro parental rights policy so this is um this is a problem all over our nation and, and even all over the world right now yeah so you mentioned christians on the school board you know i know which school board you've been fighting against um i want to ask you a little bit more about just the 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 spiritual attack that that you come against when you push back i read the things in the newspapers 
about you. <laughs> They're never kind. But but with that, you have Christians on the school board, so-called Christian in the name. Where do you see the state of the church in America? Because that's the world we know is the American church. Right. Well, these people that are on school boards, um, you know, I, I call them people that fly the banner of Christianity. You know, they, they say, hey, I'm a Christian. But when it comes down to it, um, you have to ask yourself, what what is the fruit of a Christian life? And I, I do believe what we're seeing is God is doing a work of separation. He said that the wheat and the tares are going to grow up together. And at the end of the age, he's going to separate them out and bind up the tares and cast them into the fire, you know, into the furnace. So um, I believe we're seeing God doing that work of separation has become very clear as time progresses. You're either for God or you're against him. And when it comes down to making a, a, decision on what's going to be taught to children, Christian men and women don't allow this type of perversion to be put into the minds of our young ones. And God, you know, Jesus was very clear that uh, it's better that you tie a millstone around your neck, be flung into the sea than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. And somebody who's a Christian and who's on a school board, they have a whole lot of little ones that are going to be stumbled by this. And they have to ask themselves, are they truly following God or are they just trying to advance their own political career? Yeah, that's pretty evil. When you want to advance your own political career and you're willing to sacrifice somebody else's child. Uh, you know, I look right. at Romans chapter one, for example, where uh, God says at the end of Romans chapter one, after he talks about homosexuality and then all of the characters of the world, what it's going to look like at, in the last days, which are very similar to Second uh, Timothy chapter three, where Paul writes, people will, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God and so forth. Very similar set of characteristics at the end of Romans chapter one. And then God says that he will judge those who practice those things and those who approve of them. So here's mm -hmm. you, I mean, you look at the people that are approving of this and, and, and it's gone beyond homosexuality. You and I are both good friends with an attorney who's helped both of our churches work through the dynamics of same-sex marriage uh, with our boards and so forth and right. the protections that are in place. But I remember him saying, I think it was in 2008, it's just a matter of time before this dam breaks. And he said, but yes. what's going to happen is it's just going to progress beyond gay marriage to pedophilia. And we are watching that dam burst open now. And here it is as a Christian, if you speak out against it, you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're, I mean I've seen what, what they've said about you in the newspapers. It, it just standing up for what is right and righteous. Uh, so, something else, I want to come back to this in a few more minutes, but something else to get people a little bit more familiar with you. You're a pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Right. Correct? Is that the name yes. of your church? Mm -hmm. It was right. 412 Murrieta, yes. and you're just, right. you're, you're, you're moving. It's fantastic. If you're in the Temecula Valley area, uh, many of you have already heard of Pastor Tim, but outstanding church. Um, I've told many people if, if, uh, um, the, the day when I when I gotta have a Sunday off, I'm driving out to Tim's church, even though it's a long drive. That's where I'm gonna be heading for Sundays. Um, if I can't be at my own church for whatever reason, like let's say my church kicked me out and they said, We're tired of you talking about prophecy. All right, let me go over here to Tim's church. Um because he's gonna be talking about he's prophecy. gonna be talking about prophecy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And all these things. Okay, so when the pandemic started, we got to go all the way back to two years ago. Right. And, uh, you know, you and I were conversing all the time on, on this and uh, talking to our boards and attorneys about it. And you, you just kept moving forward. I remember that you pushed and pushed and pushed. You didn't close it all. I think we did video church at our church for two weeks. You were doing it there. I remember your Easter Sunday. And I remember all the things that were happening against you. Um, and, you know, Jack Hibbs was organizing to reopen, I think, at the end of May. You said, right. we're, 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 we're not, we're not going to close at all. And then I said, love Tim. This is great. What, let's, let's keep moving forward. And then you went up to Sacramento right. and, and, and there, what happened in Sacramento in California? For those of you, we have people all over the world that watch this. Some don't know where Sacramento is. So it's the capital of the state of California where governor Newsom, mm -hmm. one of the worst governors in the world happens to uh, live. Right. 
Yeah, we were up there and uh, there was a big protest. About 13 to 15,000 people were at that event. We we're on the west steps of the Capitol building. And um, I was invited up by the group. They said, hey, we want a pastor to come represent the churches that are in opposition to the shutdowns. So I said, absolutely. I flew up there and and we were pre. You know, I was preaching. I was preaching about a right exegesis of the Romans chapter 13 verses that talk about submitting to the government. I was preaching about what that really truly means. And during that, that time up there, Gavin Newsom gave the order to have the, the leaders of this event arrested. And so it was uh, me, there was, like I said, 13 to 15,000 people there. They made 31, I believe, 31 arrests. I was one of them. Uh, they came out to the crowd and there was video. Uh, somebody took a video that was, that, you know, caught it on film and you could see the, the officers looking and they're like, Oh, there he is. Reach out and got me and pulled me, pulled me in. And, um, you know, I immediately identified myself as a chaplain for law enforcement. I've been a chaplain now for Riverside County Sheriff's department for 12 years. So, and at, this was two years ago. So it had been a decade and immediately identifying myself and letting them know I wasn't, wasn't against them. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a problem with them. Um, but you know, they took me into custody and I got charged with, uh, fell, uh, I got charged with creating a public health hazard because I failed to maintain six feet of distance between me and someone else. When in reality, it was them that failed to maintain it because they went out and grabbed me. I didn't, I didn't get close to them, but, um, you know, it was a political stunt by Gavin Newsom to try to make it look like there was 13 to 15,000 people against the police. And that just wasn't the case. What we were there is telling them, we don't, we don't think that you should have the right to shut down the church. Amen. Yeah. And, and you've been a huge supporter of law enforcement ever since uh, for, for years. Uh, right. You believe that people should be able to, uh, you believe in the second amendment, first amendment and second amendment, praise the Lord. But, um, <laughs> But, but, and you, I mean, you've been a big supporter of these things, uh, which has been great. Uh, I want to ask you this about Romans chapter 13, because you mentioned it. There's a lot of pastors out there that teach, well, I, and you've seen, I mean, this is, it's just been bizarre to watch the last two years. Well, whatever the government tells you to do, you just need to submit and do it. And if you don't, you're not a good Christian. That's how they interpret Romans chapter 13. Why don't you fill in everybody on what Romans chapter 13 yeah. is? Because, I mean, yeah. there's people watching right now from Canada. There's people watching right now from Australia or, or in New Zealand or will be by tomorrow um, and all over Europe. And so we're, we're all dealing with this. And they're told, be a good Christian. Just do what you're told. Right. Well, would, do you tell that to a Christian living in China who's pregnant with the, their third or fourth child and they're not allowed to have that many children and the government says, you just abort your baby? Are you just a good Christian and abort your baby? I mean, yeah. we, we have to understand that, that you know, when, when that was written and who Paul was addressing, you, you have to do what, you know, people who who do exegesis of the scriptures. In other words, they rightly interpret the scriptures every I know you do this. I do this. We do what's called bridging the gaps because there's a lot of gaps. There's there's a time gap, a language gap, a cultural gap, um, a government gap. There's there's things that are just different. There's geographical gaps. And so you have to bridge these gaps to come up with the right interpretation. So at the time, you know, who who was the governing authority? Well, it was Rome. And what was that government style? Well, that government style was not a democratic republic, a constitutional republic like we have here in America. So who's the governing authority in America? We are. It's we the people in America. And that's that's the governing authority. But we also have to understand this, that, that Romans 13 wasn't a blanket statement to just blindly submit to anything that the government tells us to do. I mean, Moses' parents, they were happy to go against the Pharaoh's command, uh, right? Uh, we look at um, Esther. She wasn't supposed to go before the king. She said, I'll probably die for this. I'm going to do it anyways. You look at uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. You look at Peter. I mean, the Bible is replete with stories of people, men and women of God, who did not do what the governing authorities told them to do because it was a violation of God's authoritative word. So Amen. that... To, to utilize Romans 13 in the the pandemic and everything that was going on in the last two years, it just really is a, a poor use of that scripture. It really is taken way out of context. 
It is. And, and Paul, who wrote Romans chapter 13, obviously didn't interpret it, what he wrote, the way that modern pastors do, because he got his head cut off by the Roman government, because, right. because he wasn't going along with them. He wasn't going to worship their God. He wasn't going to submit in such a way. In fact, when you look at the churches of the book of Revelation, the seven churches, you start to find out, if you're willing to study it enough, that the churches that were persecuted and suffered were the ones that refused to bow to Caesar. And they're the ones that recognize that Jesus is Lord. The reason why Laodicea was the church that it was that boasted about all that it had is because it was okay with Caesar. It was, so Jesus said, you're lukewarm. But you, you look at the suffering church, the persecuted church, they were going down that path. So I, I look right. at that argument and I think, what, what, you know, it's, it's, it's really a very, very lame argument. Um, right. uh, and, and, but it's also caused, you also see the, where Christians, in the, mainly in the Western world, very soft. And it's, you know, you just go, just go along with everything. That's why we have social justice that's in the church too, you think? Right. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, yeah the social justice issue creeping in the church is a huge problem right now. I mean, there's churches here that, that I, I talk to and they're performing you know, baptisms for openly gay couples there. They have uh, social justice pastors that sit their white kids down in circles and tell them how to be better white kids. I mean, this is weird to watch these things creep into the church, but that's what happens when people veer away from true Bible teaching. You know, we, we're definitely, like you said, we're at that point in time where people will no longer endure sound doctrine. Yeah. I drove by a church today uh, in our valley, you know the valley that I live in. I drove by this church today. It's not one that I associate with, but it had a rainbow flag and some other flag. I don't know what it was. And then it had a big sign, stop by our bookstore with just a big rainbow thing, or by a rainbow bookstore. That's the bookstore at that church. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, wow, this is, and if, you know, uh, for the things that we talk about to go public, people hate it. They, they just right. they just hate it. Uh, but in the last day, scoffers will come. Uh, we, we know that. And they're also going to be all of these things, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, haters, boasters, proud, traitors, you know, right on down that characteristic doctrine right. of demons, as you mentioned, and so forth. Okay, I have a lot more I want to ask you about, but I want to go over to the illegal alien thing because I'm looking at this, Tim. You, you, it was uh, about two years ago also when you had brought it to the attention, this is when you started getting censored. And you had been talking to people in the medical field, and we can't get too much into, you know, this thing, the, the, right. the shot. Um, but you had real knowledge of illegal aliens being brought in at night and brought into different communities. Uh, right. You had the facts on it. And you had right. exposed it. I think you were given an opportunity at one time to go public with it on a public TV. And I think they nixed that idea or something like that. I don't think they liked you. I can't remember what it was. They didn't like what you were saying. But now right. we, we look at where we are. We're, walking, we're watching the borders of Texas. Now, we're in California. Um, so it's a little bit different because of Newsom. Uh, but in, I, I kind of guess in Texas, what's happening with the border, Tim, uh, you, you probably have a better handle on this than me. The reason why they're, the feds are pushing back so much against Texas is because Texas pushes back against so much against the feds. Right. And then, but the borders, this isn't just about uh, the Mexican who wants to come over to the states no. to, to no, work and supply for his family. Because here in Southern California, you know, half the people in our church come from that environment. Probably, right. you know, many in your community do too. That's part of the environment. Right. But that's not what the open border problem is about. It's, it's, this isn't about the, the, the man who comes across the border wants to supply money for his family. What, what is it? I mean, no, no, because you look at most of the people coming across our southern border. What what and who are they? They are they are. First of all, they're men. They're fighting age men. This isn't families coming across the border. This is fighting age men. And they're coming across by the millions at this point. And they're not like you said, they're not Mexicans. Very few of them are Mexicans at this point. They're they're getting people across the border from Russia, from China. They're getting people across the border from all different African countries. Um 
this is this is a, a problem where people are flooding down to Mexico and then they come up into our nation from from there. And I, I want to share with you just a quick statistics. I heard this um, just the other day. The University of Syracuse uh, they keep this ongoing tally of federal immigration. And as you know, uh, Tom, just last year they had two million people come across the border illegally. Um, now, here was the statistics. So uh, 11,664 immigration court proceedings have happened to date. This is as of last week. So so here we are partway through the year. If they keep that on track, they keep that same pace. By the end of 2022, they will have processed 46,000 656 people. So the courts are processing this. They're hung up. They're working on this. By the end of this year, 46,656. Now, last year, we brought in 2 million illegal aliens. That would mean it would take approximately 43 years at this pace that we're processing them, 43 years to process last year alone. Wow. And what that tells us is that if this continues on, if Biden continues with what he's doing, by the end of his presidency, we will have tied up the courts longer than this nation has been a nation. Wow. And you, so when you look at this, I believe we are being destroyed from within. Do you think that's what part of the open borders is about? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And and you, you get the- yeah. But here, here's by the end of this year, it is estimated that 20% of the people in America are going to be here illegally. 20%? 20%. <laughs> that is outrageous. So with that, <clears throat> excuse me, do they also have the right to vote? In many places, like in California, we have motor voter law. So yeah. you just go and get a, a license and boom, you're voting. Yeah. Unbelievable. So you can change the dynamics of everything and destroy everything. At the same time, we're watching a food crisis, which I believe is intentionally manufactured. That's my right. opinion. Same thing with the economic crisis. You print enough trillions of dollars, sooner or later, you'll crash everything because you're going to create hyperinflation. So I look at this. To me, it looks ve- all of these things look very intentional. So when we see the economy problems, economic problems, food crisis problems, supply chain problems. Let's open up the borders and let me- more people in here. That it, it makes absolutely no sense. So it has to be something very evil that's behind all of this. Right. I believe the globalists want to destroy the borders uh, in order to, in, yeah. and to destroy America. I don't think that this this new world order system that these globalists want, the Klaus Schwab's and the people who are in Washington uh, and the European globalists, as long as you have a strong America, uh, they can't get their kingdom. So I think that's really what this is about. Right. Yeah. You know, people, they, they get upset when you bring up the borders is, you know, especially as a pastor, you start talking about borders, like, Hey, what are you doing? That's politics. It's not politics. Acts chapter 17 says that from one blood, God made all of humanity. And it even says that he's the one that has determined the boundaries of their inhabitation. God's the one that sets up borders. It's his idea. The only one who wants to tear down borders is the spirit of antichrist to rule the world, having that one world government. And so we're seeing that happen all around. And people that support this idea of, um, of tearing down the borders, they, they may in their minds have good intentions, but what they don't realize is they're, they're, they're actually supporting what the antichrist wants. Yeah. You know, talking about tearing down borders, it's uh, not just the borders of the country. It's the borders of what's male and female. That's been eliminated. You know, you look at uh, and you start going across the board. You realize, okay, there's it's what's true, what's not true, and trying to tell what's fake news and what's not fake news, which you know we've dealt with a lot. Okay, I want to get to go some questions, Tim. So I'm going to ask everybody to please start sending in your questions. And when you send them, make sure you put the word "question" in all caps. And while I'm waiting for your questions to come in, Tim, you know, we we talked about Disney from the beginning. We talked about several different things. Uh, Do you have some other things you want to add to what we've been talking about? Um, Well, I I would say this, the the stuff that Disney's doing, um, the the government ran schools are doing the same thing. Government ran schools. Okay. So I look at that. That's that's a a great way of, of, uh, that's a great definition. It's real branding. They are government-run yeah. schools. That's what they are. Yeah. Unless you're, you're, you, you're able to pull your kid out of something like that. Uh, listen, when, when the children of, of uh, Judah, Jerusalem, were taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon, they were taken captive and put into government-run schools. 
instead of our children being kidnapped from our homes, what they do is their their minds are kidnapped every day right. in these government run schools. Right. It just totally yeah, you think about it, they yeah. they have more time with our kids than we do. If your kids are involved in a government ran school, they have more access and time with your children than you do. Yeah. They, you break oh, they do. the amount of hours in a day. They do. So you think, and right. for people who go to church, they say, well, I take my kid to church. What's that, an hour and a half? One right. day a week? And then right. not only is your kid in school or your grandkid in school, uh, it's not all public teachers are bad. I know some public school sure. teachers that go to our church. They're, they hate the stuff that they see happening. Just hate it. And, you know, you, you and I have both been part of these, um, what do you call them, town hall meetings and so forth right. that involve teachers are saying, no, we don't want a part of this. But the problem is you got the teachers unions and all these other things and they're out. Satan knows if he gets to the kids. You, I mean, look, if you look at just the junior high and high school age right now, you push this 10 years out. What do you have? All morals are completely removed. Right. Just, so what's that going to be for the people who are leading everything in 10 years from now? It's not going to go good for anybody at all. Right. Okay. Uh, how can, so I've got a lot of questions, Tim. Somebody wants to know who is Tom Thompson. Well, Tim, Tom, I'm Tom Hughes. This is Tim Thompson with me. <laughs> Tim is pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley, California. And uh, we've been uh, associates and friends for uh, quite some time over our love in teaching of Bible prophecy, and we both have an emphasis really on two different things that involve the prophetic word. And uh, Tim, um, this one person asked on here, do you think Newsom, this is Renee, she says, do you think Newsom will run for president? Uh, well, that was definitely one of the the fears, and that was why there was such a big push for um, the recall here in California. They were saying, "Well, we got to recall this guy. If we can recall him, no way he'll be able to to uh, get elected." Um, so that's definitely a fear, and it's something that he's talked about. So we'll see if he does. But it really wouldn't surprise me. You know, he's for people that don't know, he is part of Nancy Pelosi's family. Um, you know, so yeah. th that's a big, powerful family, and he definitely has expressed aspirations to run for that that role. We'll see what God allows. Yeah, and I'm sure that the leftists that are out there would love to have him run, too. Um, so how can we shut down, this is from Mechanic 350, how can we shut down Disney immediately? <laughs> I mean, you know. What do you do? Yeah, oh, that's that's tough. I mean, I would love to see them get shut down. I, I've seen this for years. Um, my family has seen it for years. And, um, you know, we, we've just boycotted them as a family. But um, we're watching. I don't know if you've watched the uh, stock value on Disney. It's definitely dropping. Um, many of the employees are starting to speak out. And, you know, they, there was several employees, or they call them cast members. Uh, There's several cast members out front of uh, Disney headquarters there in Burbank, California, just yesterday speaking out against what's going on. So I think you're, you're starting to see a continual, you know, we, we watch as a nation what God's doing. And, and I've said this before, even, even somebody who's on the left, even somebody who doesn't know God can see God at work and they see what God is doing. They, they say we're, we're living in polarized times. I, I get that, that we're living in a polarized nation, but what are we polarized with? We are polarized with you are either for God or you're against him. This is the, that work of separation that we see God doing. Um, ultimately, we're going to see that separation completed when the rapture of the church takes place. So um, I, I think this Disney thing is just more and more of what God's allowing to separate out the true believers from the false believers. And, you know, we've got to yeah. do everything we can to speak out against these things. A lot of people, they don't understand. We, we need to be salt and light. Light exposes the wickedness that's in the darkness. So these types of things like like what but tom hughes does share these things out with your friends that need to know what's going on yeah well this brings me to a point tim you're a fighter that's one of the things i i that i really like about you is you're a fighter you're a leader you push things forward you're not afraid of a fight i've seen the people that you've taken on uh nationally and also locally and that the, the the um types of the types of things you've taken on. 
Uh, with that, I want to ask you a question in just a second, but people, you also have, we're both a pastor of a 412 church. However, like myself, I have hope for our times uh, or uh, ministry. You have Our Watch. Uh, and everybody can get a hold of you at OurWatch.com? Yes. Okay, OurWatch.com. You also have YouTube by the same name, as such as Hope for Our Times is yeah. also by the same name. OurWatch.com. Folks, it's fantastic. Every Wednesday, you have a live interview with somebody different that's on there. It's an outstanding program. I encourage you to go there. It's Our Watch. <clears throat> if it's not here in the description, hey, Matt and Gabe, can you make sure that you put Our Watch in the description, both YouTube and uh, .com, because I really want people to go there and... Uh, <clears throat> And get what you're about. So there's a lot of Christians that say, you know what, we've lost. There's no sense in fighting. So why get involved in politics? Right. Yeah, I get asked that question a lot, especially because of the, you know, the view that you and I both share on end times. You know, if you really believe he's coming back, you really believe it's a preacher of rapture. Why are you fighting? Aren't we, you know, if you really truly believe it's that close, you know, here's the fact. God said to occupy until he returns. Uh, he told us to be found busy and waiting, and we're supposed to be salt and light. He didn't say be salt and light until you think it's almost over. Uh, and then once it's almost over, just go ahead and sit on the couch. Like, no, he says be salt and light. Salt's a preservative. So we're supposed to do everything we can. And I believe, and, and I think you share this view, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, there is a restraining force mm -hmm. that's here, and that restraining force is going to be removed. I believe that restraining force is the work of the Holy Spirit in and through the church and we're we're here to be yeah. that that tool that god uses to restrain and i i can see it i'm watching it how how vivid it is for me being on the front lines of, of some of these events that i go to and we're we're pushing back we are restraining if i didn't go to the school boards and i didn't hold these principals and these teachers the, the bad teachers accountable if i didn't hold them accountable to make sure like like one of the things that i sent to you today that the, the the gay agenda that that was in on a classroom for uh, a second grader, you know, if I if I didn't push back on that, if we didn't call the school and call the principal, call the, you know, we call these people out, then Satan would just be free to do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, we are here, we are doing that work, and someday God will remove us, and that restraining force will be gone. The Antichrist will be revealed. Amen. I love that. I mean, if you're not part of the restraining work that the Holy Spirit is doing. Then what are you doing as a Christian? You know, I mean, right. you start looking at it, going, <clears throat> "What?" <clears throat> really, I mean, if you go back to Nazi Germany, and you look at, listen, the the pastors and the the people that got involved and pushed back. Listen, yeah, they suffered. Yes, yeah, some of them were even were even locked up, and some of them even died because they did it. But they were part of the the ministry of the Holy Spirit standing up for what is right and righteous. And, and again, I love how you said that. At what point did Jesus say, or anywhere in the Bible, when you see these things begin to happen, uh, just sit, sit at home, lock your doors, and don't do anything. Right. It's, it's the opposite. You know, right. you, you get involved. You know, Daniel never stopped fighting. Paul right. didn't stop fighting, even when he knew his head was about ready to be cut off. He's still right. connecting with the churches. He's still inspiring them. He's still writing. Daniel's opening up his door saying, go ahead and kill me. Throw me in the lion's den. Do whatever you want, but I'm still going to press forward. And, I, and I, again, I just really like that about you, Tim. Uh, one of the many things. Okay, I don't know. Do you know what Amaze is? This is from Pookie. It says, what do you think about Amaze on YouTube promoting children and sex? Do you know what Amaze is? Um. I, there's a couple of things I know about that. So I don't know if it's the right one, but there is a group called Amaze and they do promote the sexual stuff with the kids. So I'm not okay. sure exactly what, which one they're referring to. Yeah, this is bad stuff. You know, Tim has a lot of work he has done on this in research, interviews, and so forth. Again, you can find those at Our Watch, uh, OurWatch.com. Uh, this next question, it comes from, uh, let's see, this comes from Kev W., Pastor Tom, I believe this all goes back to Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. So I look at this, Tim, with the Tower of Babel, and I've taught on this before, where you have Nimrod, it was that world order without God. It was that attempt at building a utopian world. Nimrod was, Nimrod was a type of Antichrist, folks. And so when you look at that, 
God divided, he separated the languages and separated the people according to their languages. And ever since that, Satan has been looking for his antichrist and he's been trying to get the world back together. Although now we have many languages, however, we have this utopian world to have one voice. And this one voice is perverted, it's wicked, and it, and it takes on so many different forms, but it's all under the guise of, well, this is what is best for everybody. This is what's really good. We really know what's good. And it's not this righteousness stuff. Your righteousness stuff that you find from the Bible, that stuff's actually bad. You guys don't love anybody. If you really loved everybody, anybody, you would just let you go along with this plan. So yeah, I would look at that and say, it all goes back to the Tower of Babel because that's how Satan works. Um, Tim, when I look at some of the, okay, this person has a, just a comment about voter fraud. How bad do you think voter fraud is? Oops, I, I'm not allowed to talk about it. We got to stop. Sorry about that. I'm going to get in trouble on that one. Okay, let's just, well, man. Okay, isn't that weird? Can't talk about that? Right. Okay. Do you believe, this is from Just Vicky, do you believe it is a righteous pursuit to stand for our country and fight against evil laws, etc., until the Lord returns? I think you just, you answered that before I saw this question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely think we should be engaged um, and be that restraining force, be that tool that, that the Holy Spirit's using. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, are we supposed to, this is from Joe Mama, are we supposed to accept digital currency or pitch a tent? So I, I can comment on this, Tim. So, okay. so listen, here's the deal. It, right now, we're not in the system of the mark of the beast. If Okay, and picture this, you know, as Tim's been talking about pushing forward and being involved, and you don't just, uh, you, you've got to be involved. You've got to be salt and light. We've got to stand up for what is right. We want to occupy until he comes. Think of it this way. We don't know when we are going to be called home. We don't know when the rapture is going to take place. And if you just think about some of the events that are taking place right now, if you project out a year from now, if we're not raptured, how much worse is everything going to be? You know, so it's, it's just, it's being involved. When it comes to digital currency, listen, this whole digital currency thing could come about in six months. It doesn't right, mean it's the mark easily. of the beast. <laughs> you know, the mark of the beast is going to come. It will be implemented at the midpoint of the tribulation, but we're not there yet. So digital currency could come as soon as before the end of this year. And it's part of the system that we have. But until I'm told to worship this, antichrist and so forth um i gotta realize listen the social security card wasn't the mark of the beast uh debit card wasn't the mark of the beast uh, and i could go down a list of many things that people have thought for a long time is the mark of the beast they have not been the mark of the beast i believe digital currency it appears that it's going to be the perfect setup to implement the beast system that is coming because no one can buy or sell unless they have that mark of the beast. But but as of right now, I believe what's going to happen with digital currency will be a step that uh, that is just another step closer down that path uh, to to the mark of the beast. You know, the last year and a half we've had this dealing with. If you receive something in particular, you can go shopping right. to certain stores. If you don't receive the medical procedure, you can't go shopping to certain stores. You can't fly, you can fly, and that sort of thing. So that that whole uh, setup of people, the whole cultural setup is there, and I believe the digital currency that's coming first is just going to be another setup for what is coming with the system of the beast that is eventually coming. So I know that's kind of a long answer, but I hope I answered the question okay. And hey, uh, Tom, if I yeah. could just uh, to go back, somebody asked about Amaze. There, there's a couple of different things out there. Um, Amaze.org is pro probably what they're talking about. And there's another thing called TeenSource.org. Okay. And if, if you're a parent or a grandparent, I highly recommend that you go to those two websites. Um, not, not to to see how vulgar they are because they're very vulgar, but just to know what's being used to infiltrate your children's minds. Um, many states in America are using both of those, um, especially teensource.org. And 
that basically it's a resource that they send your teenagers to and you can sign up. You have to, you go in there, sign up, tell them that you're a teenager. You kind of have to lie a little bit on that. Um, but you enter in your phone number, tell them you're a teenager. They'll start sending you weekly updates. And I, you know, I, for the sake of your audience, I'm not going to tell you what's in these updates because it is vulgar. It is nastiness. It is pure nastiness. And it's, it's what they're telling your children and your grandchildren to do. So if you want to be informed and know what's being pumped into your, your kids' brains, go to teensource.org and, and, and also to um, amaze.org. And you can see this stuff is just vulgar. And for some reason, these, these school districts think that it's okay. That's bad. Uh, Tim, what do you have? I have a question on here from Susan. I want to get to about Noah's time and Sodom and Gomorrah in a minute. But before I get to her question, I would ask you, because I've watched you and you've really have led the charge against your local community with righteousness. I would say it's not so much that you've led the charge against them. What you've done is you've stood up for righteousness. That's standing up, being willing to be bold and just stand up, go to the board meetings and get involved has caused them to say you're against us no we're standing up for what is right daniel did what was right it wasn't that he was going against the king or protesting daniel did what was right but you have led this you've been one of the more foremost leaders in the country when it comes to this what is it what would you say to encourage people that are thinking i need to take that step i need to do something do you have any words to to help give that exhortation or something Yeah, I would tell them that everybody can do something. It's that simple. You know, everybody's got different unique gifts and talents, um, spiritual giftings. And it, you know, just like the word of God says that every part of the body has to do its job. And we're all part of the body of Christ. We all have those unique gifts. So get out and do something. You know, there's all sorts of things that can happen. You can, um, you know, if you watch on, on our watch, we talk about it every Wednesday night, but there's ways to get involved, to, to get engaged. You know, maybe you're, you're not the type that would go knock on somebody's door and say, Hey, there's this Christian that's running for school board. You should vote for him. Maybe that's not you, but you could write a check to that person running for school board so they can buy yard signs. So somebody else can go put yard signs out. You know, there's, there's so many different things that can be done. That's one of the things we're trying to do just in our local area is put Christians on the school board, good, strong Christians that won't let the stuff be taught to kids and won't let the school usurp the authority of the parents. So we're getting behind these, these candidates and making sure they're the ones that get appointed. And I'll tell you what, the radical left is scared of what we're doing. In fact, just this last week, the California Teachers Association, which uh, is the largest union in California and the most corrupt, they spend more money than even the, the uh, Native American casinos that are here in California. The California Teachers Association spends way more money um, to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars a year trying to push this kind of nasty legislation upon our state. The California Teachers Association opened up a session last week talking about me saying we got to put a stop to this guy in Southern California because they're afraid that we're going to flip these school boards and they're going to lose control. Good. So I would just tell everybody, get involved. And, and the reason they keep telling Christians you're not supposed to be involved in politics is they know that when Christians get involved in politics, we win. Yeah. You know what? And, and these people need to shut their mouths. I mean, the only way they're going to shut their evil mouths, because this evil stuff that comes out of them, is by being involved. I praise God what you're doing, because if you have... Uh, a person like you in that community, you get another community, another community, this will flip everything. And I'd rather be found doing what's right when the Lord returns than doing nothing when the Lord returns. That's like the person who buried their talent instead of saying, well, here's what you gave me. I'm going to do something with it. What did the Lord say about the person who buried the talent? He said, you're wicked. Wicked, yeah. wicked, wicked so, servants. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, Tim, because I mean, just imagine the difference that things would be right now if people would be involved because you can, you flip the school boards. I believe you can start flipping the rest of the entire country. Right. Uh, absolutely. This is from, this from Susan. As in Noah's time and Sodom, God rescued his people at the last minute. Do you think we will face the same? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I you know have a you book. Kinda, What's your book called? Yeah, I have, uh, it's Awake, America's Final Great Awakening. Okay. And and in the book, I talk about the different awakenings that have taken place historically. Um, 
you know, you, you look at what God allowed here in this nation and, and I'll just real briefly, there's this cyclical nature of man. We see it in, in the book of judges where, you know, you enter into the promises of God, you start to sin. God raises up wicked, uh, wicked rulers. The wicked rulers bring oppression upon the people. The people cry out to the Lord because of the oppression. God sends a deliverer or no, God sends somebody to call them to repentance for the sake of those who repent. God sends somebody to deliver them. And they enter back into the promises and start that cycle all over again. And I believe here in America, we're at the end of, of that cycle. I call it a sin cycle. We're at the end of a sin cycle. God has raised up. Let's, let's face it. We got some wicked rulers bringing oppression upon the people right now. Um, God has sent people to call people to repentance. He sent the Tom Hughes of the world and the Tim Thompson's and Jack Hibbs and, and uh, Rob McCoy's and Mike McClure's and, you know, God, God's sending out people to call people to repentance. And for the sake of those who repent, God is going to send deliverance. Now I I'm of the mindset that this is a final great awakening here in America. And when God does send um, deliverance, I think what he's going to do is just, rapture us. That's what I think. But I, I see a great awakening taking place right now. Um, I, I believe we're seeing a, a final great awakening. And the, really, when you look at Bible prophecy as a whole, you look at what's going on with Israel, you look at uh, everything going on at the Temple Mount, you, you everything that's going on with Russia, you start putting it all together. Do we have time for a final great awakening here in America? Yes, absolutely we do. But it's the final one. That yeah. is the final one because there's too there's too much that has happened that has been fulfilled prophetically. There's too much for this to continue to go on. And like I said at the beginning of the program, God has had it. His he has a lot of patience, but the end of his patience is when adult sexual perversion is now forced on children, and that's going on worldwide. And God God is a consistent God. He will not that allow that to continue on. And it's worldwide right now. It's a pandemic. That is a pandemic. Yeah. That's bad. So I, I look at this, Tim, and I think I, I, I think it's a good place to close out. We've been on about 50 minutes. I promised you 45. I always go over with my guests. So and I know you're, you're super busy. But with We're this, Tim, a it's a great place to end on. I, you know, I don't have a lot of hope for a great awakening. I wish for it. I got asked that question last night, by the way, live. And I said, Biblically, the Bible talks about the last days as a time when the people have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Uh, Jesus says, will I even find any faith? However, we don't know because the Bible does, never told us anywhere where there was going to be an awakening and there have been some. So there could very well be one just before the rapture. It could very well be the rapture takes place and then after that this great awakening does happen because there's many people that come to come to faith in Jesus Christ during the tribulation period, both Jew and right. Gentile alike. So, uh, but with that, there, I, what I do see happening, Tim, and I think you would agree with me on this. By the way, I do agree with you on your ter interpretation, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I think you would agree with me on this also, that what we do see happening is people who are believers are much more on fire now than they were two and a half years ago. Amen to that, absolutely. And we've also seen... I think you said it in the beginning, a separation of the wheat and tares. It's like a lot of other people right. who used to be involved. I mean, look how many churches are still closed. Or just, right. are they still, they still practice social distancing. Yeah, I mean, you're right. looking going, really? You know, yeah. pastors don't even want, and how many pastors have, you know what's been exposed is wokeness within the church. Right. The pastors. Right. You, know, you didn't really see it before. Last now, now you can really it's see it's become these very clear at this yeah, point, hasn't it? It has. So, uh, we have a uh, real quick Tim, they can find you again at our watch. Is it on our description? Okay, it's on our description, ourwatch.com. Anything else you want to share with everybody? How to follow you? You have something coming up. Like I mentioned, you spoke with Charlie Kirk and Sebastian Gorka yesterday. You know, what, what you got going? Yeah, well, we got, um, well, we got a thing going on for our pack that's coming up April 22nd. Anything they want to find out, we put it all out there on rwatch.com, and they can uh, follow me at Real Pastor Tim on almost all social media things. It's at Real Pastor Tim. So love to, to hear from everyone. I like that. Real Pastor Tim, you're the real deal. Thank you very much. Also, uh, everyone, I am speaking in the Seattle area coming up in the middle of May, and also right after that, the following week, I'll be speaking in... Colorado Springs, so I have those things coming up along with some other uh, things that are happening. 
And uh, with that, well, so just well, I guess that's all I have to say. I don't know what else I have to say. I guess I'm done talking. I think I'm done talking. You can like and share this. We appreciate that. Go to Tim's Hour Watch and, and watch his videos. You're going to be blessed by them. Share them with everyone. He has information on there that everybody needs to get to know. God bless you, everybody. Listen, I have a couple of midweek updates that will be coming this week because we got a lot going on. And um, yeah, we have a lot going on. So anyways, that's it. Bye, everyone.